It's good to see faces again. I want to tell you, I'm, I'm really happy to see faces again. I wish we were in school. Oh well. It is what it is. I know. I need to get out of my pipe dream and everybody be here in school. Alright, let me turn this off. Let's see. There we go. So everybody's doing good? Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. All right. Uh, we have one more topic to cover. Properties of logarithms. Okay, first off, uh, your homework. Oh, now I'm paranoid. I hope I did everything correctly here. Okay, we had a worksheet uh, that I gave you on Friday. Is there any problems, any questions that you have in regards to the problems from the worksheet on Friday? Can we do Say that one more time. Can we do 16? 16, sure. Problem 16, we have the log base 3 of x squared minus 8x equals 2. Is that the correct problem? Yeah. All right. Now, once again, as we talked about last Friday, we have to... be able to convert in both directions here. If I have a base to some exponent, I get some value. In a logarithmic form, this is the log of the base of some value will equal an exponent. Okay, and this is how we can transform things into things that would be a lot easier for us to work with. Because in a logarithmic form, it's not a natural thing for us to just sit there and do log problems. It's just not natural. We don't do it on a daily basis. We don't drive our car and think about logarithms as we're going down the road. Um, we, we just don't think about how we deal with and work with logarithms. So putting it into an exponential form, will make things a lot easier in regards to this. So our base is a value of 3. Our exponent is a value of 2. And this is equal to our value, which is x squared minus 8x. So now what we create is a quadratic equation, where if I have 3 squared, 3 squared is a value of 9 equal to x squared minus 8x. Subtracting this 9 over, we're left with x squared minus 8x minus 9 is equal to 0. And then we can look to factor. This would factor to x minus 9 x plus 1 is equal to 0. So x would equal 9 and negative 1 as our solutions. Now what we need to make sure of is, as we talked about last Friday, uh, we cannot take a logarithm of a negative number. So we need to check to make sure that doesn't occur. Well, this would be 9 squared minus 8 times 9. So we have 81 minus 72, we're positive there. If I throw a negative 1 in, we have negative 1 squared minus 8 times negative 1. So we'd have 1 plus 9 or plus 8, which gives us positive 9. 
So both of those would be a, uh, workable solutions. Other questions? And problem number 15 is very similar, and 14, all the ones on the back are very similar to that. Um, and problem number 14, just remember, when you don't have a base there, it's understood to be a base of 10. So we have log base 10 of x squared plus 5x plus 16 equals 1. So we have 10 to the 1 is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 16. Once again, it gives us a quadratic equation to solve. Other ones. Just very quickly, if we just take a look at number seven on the front. We have log base seven of the square root of 243 is equal to what that some value. And that's why I talked about just throw an x in there. So if we write this in an exponential form, we have a base of seven. We have an exponent of x is equal to 243, square root of 243. But when we write a square root, remember what the exponent will be. The exponent to that will be a 1 half. We want to write these both as a base of 7. So we can see, well, can I multiply 7 by itself? How many times do you get 243? Well, if I go 7 times 7, that's 49. If I take 49 and multiply it by 7, I get 243. So this would be to the third power. So we have 7 to the x, and when we have a power to the power, we have 7 to the 3 twos power. So this would give us x is equal to 3 twos. Mr. Gregory. Yeah. On my paper, it says 343, not 243. Oh, it does? Yeah. So it's 343 times 7, is that equal to, or times 49, is that equal to 343? 7 times 49, yeah, it should be 343. Same thing. Any other questions? On number 14, Yep. when there's nothing like after the log, is it always automatically going to be 10? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yep. If there's nothing there, it's a 10. And if it's LN, that's a log base E then. Yeah, if nothing there, it's understood to be 10. Please do keep up with the material. Um, because we'll add to it today. Uh, we will we will go today. Uh, Thursday and Friday will be uh, combination reviews, and we will have to have class again on Friday. Um, and then Monday will be, I'm sorry, next Tuesday we'll have the quiz because we're not allowed to have the quiz on Monday. Uh, but on Tuesday of next week we'll have the quiz, our last uh, test over Chapter 4, which will be Logarithm Z. So please do keep up with the material. Uh, looking at the notes, should still be in your packet. This is the last of your notes. What we also have, what I've added here at the beginning is just a lot of review of what we dealt with with respect to logarithms. When finding a logarithm of a value, the solution is the exponent to the base of the logarithm. 
Then we have the base of the exponent is equal to a value. And this will go both ways. Uh, base exponent equal value log of base of the value is equal to an exponent. When we deal with a common log, that is a base of 10. And once again, as we just alluded to, most of the time you will not see a base of 10 there. So you just see the log. When we deal with a natural log, natural log, we have a log base E. And then your calculator, that is ln. Properties of logarithms. Properties of logarithms. When I have two things being multiplied together, we have a log base b of a times x. Now, as I alluded to up here, when we are finding a logarithm, the solution to logarithm is going to be an exponent. Your solution is going to be an exponent. Well, let's think back to when we had x to the a times x to the b, and we are multiplying these two together. Noah, Noah what do we have to do with the exponent when we're multiplying a like basis together? Do you remember? We have x to the a times x to the b. When I want to combine these together, what do I what do I have to do with my exponents? No. You think it's adding them. Then you add. That's correct. When we have a power to a power, when you have x to the a to the b power, that's when we're multiplying them together. But when we're multiplying a like basis together here, when we're multiplying these alike bases, we add these two exponents. Well, when I'm taking the log base b of a times x, I'm multiplying, I'm multiplying these values together. Well, when I'm dealing with logarithms, I'm looking at exponents. So the exact same thing is going to occur. This is going to be the log base b of a plus the log base b of x. So you can separate the two things that are being multiplied together into their own separate logarithms. Likewise, when we have x to the a divided by x to the b. When we're dividing these, Preston, what do we have to do with our exponents when we are dividing? Um, you have to subtract them, I'm not sure. You subtract them, that's correct. x to the a minus b power. Well, when we have inside here a divided by b, it's the exact same thing. We are going to look to subtract. We have law, whoopsie. We have a log base b of a minus a log base b of x. So when we have division, we can separate them into their own separate logarithms by subtracting. When we have a log base b of 1, and it does not matter what the base is, this will always equal 0. Log base b of 1, it could be a log base 7 of 1, log base 10 of 1. What you're asking there is what exponent do I have to pay, take my base to to get a value of 1? And anything to the 0th power is a value of 1.
log base b of b, if these two are the same, I get a value of 1. They cancel each other out. Because what you're asking here basically is what exponent do I have to take the base to to get my value? Well, if they are the same thing, I just take it to an exponent of 1. And if I have log base b of b to the x, this will equal x. And if I have a base with an exponent of log base b, this will still also equal x. And we'll look at some examples of this on the back side. Now, probably the most important property of logarithms. This is probably the most important reason to be able to have logarithms and, and to work with logarithms. If I have log base b of a to the x, now we're not looking at a like basis here like we were looking at over here. When we had b and b, they were like, I get the value of x. But here I have b and I have a. What this is equal to is this is equal to x times the log base b of a. The property of logarithms, probably the most important property, is I'm able to bring the exponent, the exponent out in front of the logarithm and multiply by that exponent. So this exponent here will come out front. And this is a property that will be used quite a bit. Once again, probably the more, most important property of logarithms. If a is equal to x, if two things are equal, then log base b of a will equal log base b of x. If a is equal to x, then log base b of a will equal log base b of x. If we had the log of 5 plus the log of 4 plus the log of 7, and I want to write this as one single logarithm. Well, if I take a look at my properties, when I'm adding two logs together, I can combine them back together by multiplying, if I have the same base, I can multiply them back together to give us one single logarithm. So if we take a look at log of 5 plus the log of 4 plus the log of 7, this could equal log of 5 times 4 times 7. Once again, all we're doing is we're using the property of logarithms up here. When I have things being multiplied together or added together, I can combine them together through the act of multiplication. So we have 28 times 4, 20 times 
seven. So we have a log of 140 would be one single logarithm. We want to write the next one in one separate law or one complete log. Once again, we have to apply our properties, and some of these are going to be a two step process with respect to the properties. The two and the three are being multiplied to the logarithms, which is what we have here. If I have x times the log base b of a, I can rewrite that as the log base b of a to the x power. So if I take a look at the first one, the exponent or the value of 2. I have 2 times a log base or 2 times a log of 5. And I write want to write that. I want to get rid of that 2 on the front. Where can I put this exponent of 2 to take it back into the logarithm here? Preston? No, no, what I just said to you. Isaac, we'll go with Isaac here. Isaac, what could we do with that value of 2 to incorporate it within the logarithm again? Can't you put it on above the 5 or something? Yeah, 5 squared. So we have 2, 5 to the second power. The value of 3. Abby, where could we put the value of 3? Put it on exponent to the 2. Okay, so we have 3 cubed. So we have 5 squared plus log of 2 cubed. So now we want to combine both of these logs together. We have addition there. So if we have addition, test what are we going to have to do when we have addition to combine these into one log? Multiply the 5 Multiply. squared log for the 2 to the 3rd. Okay, so we have 5 squared times 2 cubed. So we have 5 squared, which is 25, times the value of 8. So we have the log of 200. We've got the next one here. Once again, what can we do with that value of 2? We have nothing out in front of log of 4. We have nothing out in front of log of 5. So we, but we have a 2 in front of log of 3. So, Brenner, where can we put that value of 2 at? Square the 3. Square the 3. So we have log of 4 plus log of 3 squared minus log of 5. Well, the two that are being added together, once again, we can utilize the property of multiplication. So we have the log of 4 times 3 squared. But the question is, what do I do with that subtraction of 5? Well, how do I incorporate the subtraction in our properties? Is if I have the log of two things that are being subtracted, I can take that back into a division. So we can have the log of 4 times 3 squared. And if I just want to rewrite this log of 5 minus the log of 5 there, and take this back one step. So I have the log of 4 times 3 squared, which is 936 minus the log of 5. So we have a log of 36 minus the log of 5. Writing this as one single logarithm. L, how can we write this as one single logarithm? I have a log of 36 minus the log of 5. Um, 
do you just put the log of five like under it, like divide it? Not the not the entire log of five, just the value of a five. Five. Because if we take a look, we have a log of a and the log of x here. This will take us back to the log of a divided by x, so we can rewrite this as 36. Whoopsie. The log of 36 divided by the value of 5. We take a look at the last one. My exponents are my values that are out in front of my logs. We could put it as the exponents. We have log of x squared minus log of y to the fifth plus log of z. So we have a log of x squared, but then we're subtracting off those other two logs. What do you think this would look like if I combined into one log? Brooke, what do you think? What would this look like? Um, would it be x squared over y to the fifth times z? That is correct. Because I'm subtracting off these two logs here. So this would be a negative here and a negative here. So I'm going to divide by them. And I have the x squared on top. That is correct. Very good. Well, what if I had gave you the natural log of x is equal to 7, and the natural log of y is equal to 10. And I want to find what is the natural log of x times y. Natural log of x times y. Well, let's first utilize our properties up here. I have two natural logs, or two logs being multiplied together. Let's separate them into their own separate logarithms. So if I have the log of x times y, the log of x times y, if I would separate them into their own separate logarithms, Mickey, what would that look like? I have multiplication here. What, what would I do to, add, or to separate it into our logs? Let's take a look at that property. Uh, uh, you'd add them? Add them. So we have the ln of x plus the ln of y. Well, the ln of x, I give you as a value of 7. The ln of y, I give you as a value of 10. So we have 7 plus 10, or 17. We have ln of y squared times x. First, separate them into the, don't deal with the exponent yet, just separate them into their two logs, just like we did with the first one here. Just like Mickey did over here, we have ln of x times y. This is ln of x plus the ln of y. We have ln of y squared times x. First, separate them into their own separate logarithms. Marissa, what would that look like? Would it be ln of y squared plus ln of x? That is correct. Now let's take a look at that ln of y squared. That squared term, Riley, what could we do with that, that exponent of 2 with the y? What could we do with this exponent of 2? Um, 
would it be um, would it equal to x? Now what what do we what can we do with an exponent? What was our exponent rule? Mm -hmm. When I have an exponent of x, what can we do with it? When we have an exponent, what can we do with this exponent for with our logarithm? Uh, would you cancel it out? That cancels out. What do we do with this? Where does, where can we put this? Oh, in front. In front. So we have two ln of y plus the ln of x. The ln of y once again is a value of ten. So we have two times ten plus the ln of x, which we know is a value of 7. So we have 20 plus 7, or 27. Not the ln of 27, just 27. Okay, next one. First, separate into their own separate logarithms. We have division here. So use your division. What do we do with our division when we have two separate ones, or when... When we have two things being divided within the logarithm, how can we separate them into their own separate logs? Okay, what, what happens when we have division here? Dividing two things. What can we take that into? And okay, then deal with the exponents. Just like Riley dealt with the exponent here, the exponent's going to come out front. So we have 2 times the ln of y, so deal with the exponents. And then make your substitutions and solve. Kirsten, what would this look like here? Let's don't don't sub any numbers in first, but what would this look like? Ln of x squared minus ln of y cubed. And both those exponents, what can we do with them? Uh, put them out in front. So we have 2 ln of x minus 3 ln of y. And then we can make our substitutions. 2 times ln of x, which is 7 minus 3 times ln of y, which is 10. And Kirsten, what do you come down to? Uh, negative 16. Negative 16. So once again, we are utilizing our properties of logarithms to be able to solve problems. Two to the x is equal to eight. Two to the x is equal to eight. Well, what we've done up till now is what we can use our noggin if we wanted to. We can write this as a base of 2 here. 2 to the x is equal to 2 to the third. So x is equal to a value of 3. But the problem we run into is when we go to the next problem, we have 3 to the x is equal to 30. And on an ACT question, if this is an ACT question, your first option Option A will be x is equal to 10. That would be your option A because what they're booking on or people that answer that incorrectly, they just quickly go, oh, let's see, 3 times 10 is 30. My answer has to be 10 then, which is incorrect. The problem we run into is we cannot write 30 as a base of 3. We can write it as 3 times 10, but we can't write it as a base of 3. Like over in the first one, we could write 8 as 2 to the third power. So how do we solve this problem? 
Well, this is where logarithms are going to help us out immensely. Because when the variable's in the exponent, we have problems with this. If I had this turned around and said this is x to the third power is equal to 30, we could take the cube root of both sides and get our value. We can take a cube root of 30. But if I have 3 to the x, we don't have an x root to be able to solve this problem. I can't take the x root of 30 and say, oh, I can click and collect that through the calculator and be able to come up with a solution. So we have to find some other method of madness to be able to solve this problem. And once again, this is where logarithms are going to help out. Going to our front side, just to review some of our properties, if two things are equal, if A is equal to X, then the log of A is going to equal the log of X, and I can use any base I want. So if two things are equal, the logs are going to be equal. Well, if we have 3 to the X is equal to 30, then I could take and it does not matter if I use the log or the natural log. I tend to use a natural log because it's a little bit easier for me to write. I'm sorry, I'm lazy. I got Sally and the camel is one big hump followed by two little humps there. Okay, I got big one big L, then two little uh, uh, two little humps there with the N. It's a little bit easier for me to write. I'm sorry, I'm lazy. So 3 to the x is equal to 30, then the ln of 3x, 30, 3 to the x equals the ln of 30. Two things are equal, the logarithms are equal. But what this now sets us up with is ln of 3 to the x power. I now have an exponent inside my logarithm. If we have an exponent inside the logarithm, what could we do with that exponent? Where does that exponent go? Olivia, where does that exponent go? What can, we, what can we do with this x? Oh, you put it on the outside. So we have x times the ln of 3 is equal to the ln of 30. So we have, we want to ultimately solve for x here. We want to get x all by itself. So Thaddeus, what are we going to do to get x by itself? I have x times the ln of 30 is equal to, or x times the ln of 3 is equal to ln of 30. What can I do to both sides to solve for the ln or to solve for x? Would you divide the ln of 3? So we can divide by ln of 3. So in my calculator, in my calculator, I could take the ln of 30. We can take the ln of 30 and divide it by the ln of 3. And we get 3.096. Take it to three decimal places off of this. 3.096. Now, just for giggles, if I took the log of both sides, I'm just, I'm just going to show you, if I would take the log of 30 and divide by the log of 3, I get the exact same solution, 3.096. Now, within the calculator, what I want you to do is I want you to take 3 to the 3.096 power. And what you should come down to is you should come down to a value that's close to 30. It's not going to be exact, but it's going to be close enough for government work. Now, using your calculator, once again, your common log, which is your calculator log, 
I want you to hit your log button, uh, log of 10 to the fifth power, log of 10 to the negative eighth power, the ln of e to the negative third power, the ln of e to the eighth power. Go ahead and calculate these values just using your calculator. And what we should come down to for this is you should come down to the value of 5, negative 8, negative 3, and the value of 8, which reinforces the idea if I have log base b of b dx, this will equal x. But just turn this around a little bit. What if I have 10 to, and take it to the exponent? of the log of 5, or 10, and take it to the exponent of log of 7. Or e to the ln, uh, e to the exponent of ln of 5. Angelique, what do you come up with? Let's go across. Um, five, seven, and five. Down here. Uh, eight. Eight. So if I have log base b of b, if my bases are the same, I still come down to a value of x. Well, if we take a look at the next one here, if I have log base, I have 10 to the 4 times log base b of 5 power. Now I can click the clack and do my calculator. If I click the clack this through the calculator, take your 10, take your exponent, 4 log of 5. No, what did it come down to? 625. 625. Now, if we use our properties, we could also use our property to take our exponent, take this back to my exponent. So we have log 10 times a log, or 10 to the log base 10 of 5 to the fourth power. Since this is 10 and this is understood to be 10, this would bring us back to 5 to the 4th power, which gives us our 625. If I have e to the 6 ln of x, now I don't have numbers. I could follow the same method of madness. I could bring the x back to my exponent. So we have e to the ln of x to the 6th power. ln... is log base e of x to the 6. Now when we have a base to a base, it just gives us x to the 6th power. Well, what if we have log base 2 of x minus 1 plus the log base 2 of x is equal to 1? And I want to solve for x. Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to get this into one single logarithm. 
So we need to combine both of these logarithms together. Well, to combine both of these logs together, we have addition there. This is log base 2. Of what do we have to do with our two values inside there? Abby, what do we have to do with our values of x minus 1 and x? We add them. Now we're adding them here. Then. Multiply them. So we have x times x minus 1, and this is equal to a value of 1. So we're going to multiply these two together to combine these two together because we have addition here, and to combine them back together, we can combine them with multiplication. Now let's use our properties of logarithms. Here's my base, here's my exponent, here's my value. So let's take our base to our exponent equal to our value. So this should give us 2 to the 1th power is equal to x times x minus 1. Using our distributive property, taking your x over both the terms, we're left with 2 is equal to x squared minus x. And then finally, subtracting your 2, subtracting your 2, 0 is equal to x squared minus x minus 2, which is now factorable. So go ahead and factor it down and solve for x. Kirsten, what does this factor to? X minus 2 and X plus 1. So X would equal 2 and negative 1. Now what we need to make sure of, though, is once again we need to check our solutions here. Does it make any of our initial values equal to a negative? Well, if I put the value of 2 in, 2 minus 1 is 1. I'm okay with that. And then I have 2 here. I'm okay with that. But if I put negative 1 in, we get logs of negative values. What this is called is this is called an extraneous root, and we have to cancel it out. Go ahead and solve the last one here.
Jordan, what do you get? What do you come up with? Uh, factor, factors down to x minus 1, x plus 4. So x equals 1 and negative 4. Okay, if we get x negative 1, or 1 and negative 4, do we have to eliminate one of those? Yeah, you have to eliminate negative 4. Negative 4, that is correct. The 1 would be fine up there, but the negative 4 would not be. All right, this is the properties of logarithms. Properties of logarithms. If you look in your pack at the next couple sheets, worksheets put together, they're sort of the same types of problems. I've just mixed them up into different areas. Uh, what I would like you to do is work on both of those. I will provide solutions to both of them on Classroom. You know, and, and once again, you don't have to go through each and every one of them, but you should go through, pick some out, just go every other one if you want, or just work through the problems. Um, if you have time, just take your time and get through a lot of the problems on both of them. Um, they're both good reviews of what we've been talking about with respect to logarithms. Um, we'll come back on Wednesday or on Thursday. We'll look at them. The last worksheet will go We'll just go through some problems on the last worksheet on Thursday. So what I would say, I guess what I should, the next two day or the next, the two next two worksheets, um, work on those for Thursday. The worksheet, the following worksheet, we'll work on some of those problems on Thursday and Friday will be the review that's on there. In regards to the log, pro or we're going to skip their log property review and go straight to the review for the chapter four test. So the one worksheet in there on the log properties, on uh, the one review sheet, I'm not going to go through. And, I, and somebody asked me about it, can I post solutions to the previous quizzes? Um, the problem I have with that is I'm going to use some of those questions as multiple choice questions to start. Um, the uh, the chapter test. So we'll start out with some multiple choice questions, and those are the questions that were on the first initial quizzes, and that would not be on the chapter test. And I'm going to incorporate them on the chapter test. So I'm not going to provide the solutions or the questions from the previous two quizzes. Um, you're just going to have to basically rely on uh, the review sheets and the worksheets that we're going to be working on here. Sorry about that. Questions on logarithms. So once again, the next two worksheets in the in the, in the packet, um, you should work through those uh, as much as you can. If you don't get them all done, that's fine. We'll work on um, any we'll, any questions you have on Thursday. We'll go through some of them. Um, the next worksheet in the packet will be what will be assigned on Thursday and Friday, and Friday will be a review day then uh, for the chapter test next Tuesday. Questions? Anything? Okie doke. I'm done. Uh, we are out of here for the day. Have a good rest of the day. I uh, miss you guys. Wish we were in class. I know I need to stop saying that. But it's true. Other than that, I have nothing else for you. Adios. Have a great day. Go out and enjoy some of this beautiful weather we have here in Ohio. We'll see y'all.